Good evening and welcome to the Silicon Valley Entrepreneur, a series of conversations with startup founders and their investors on what it takes to be a viable, fundable company. I'm Chris Gill, President and CEO of SPhase, the Silicon Valley Association of Startup Entrepreneurs, the largest and fastest growing not-for-profit for entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. And we work to uh, help entrepreneurs be successful by providing them with exposure to best practices extraordinary people and opportunities to grow. This week I'm pleased to have with us um, Mike Comiskey of Cogent Wireless Systems and his lead investor uh, Mohammed Abubaker of Koretsu Forum. So Mike and uh, Mohammed, thank you very much for coming along. Thanks for Pleasure to us. see you here. Um, Mike, can I start with you please and uh, can you tell us what were you doing before you founded Cogent? Yeah, before I found it, uh, Cogent, I was uh, running a division for CSI Wireless. It's a public uh, company out of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, the division was sold in May of 2006. And from that point on, uh, uh, went with our lead engineer in the company and started coming up with ideas of how to solve indoor wireless problems. Okay, we'll come back to that because I yeah. need to dig into that a little bit, but I'd, I'd like to, to come across to Mohammed. So can you tell us a bit about your background and how you came to be an angel in investor? So I've been, I was with Intel for 26 years uh, and I left Intel in 2000. And last three years I was with Intel Capital. Mm -hmm. And the reason for me going to Intel Capital was to really start my own investment later on. So I started 2000, I started this K2 Ventures, which is my angel level fund. Mm -hmm and uh, that's where I started. So I had kind of a little bit of training from Intel. Okay. And I always was very intrigued in all kind of finance, especially investment and alternative investments. And can you tell us a little bit about the types of investments that you've done over the last several years? Uh, you, you're a member of uh, Koretsu Forum, so what sort of deals have you been involved in there? So Koretsu Forum is the largest angel uh, group in the country. There are many chapters uh, within the United States and also uh, internationally. Mm -hmm. The latest one I think is opening up in Paris or so maybe already started in Paris. Uh, their investment is kind of different than other angel group. They have real estate investment as one of the major areas and then technology and regular investment, uh, biotech and other areas. So I invested in all over from starting from real estate and then uh, I've done uh, in last two years I've done three or four uh, technology investment through Karitsa Forum. Okay, and again, we'll come back to that and dig into some more of that, but I want to come back to you, Mike. So, you leave your company, you get together with the previous lead engineer, and you start coming up with ideas. Um, what did it feel like to, to, to go out on this limb to start coaching? What did your friends and family think about you starting to do this rather than go and get a job? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's a, it's a challenge because you uh, you move away from a payroll mm. and the security of uh, corporate America when you move into uh, doing a, a startup business. Uh, we Part of the, the sale of CSI, I, I uh, had some of the rewards of the, of the sale, so I had enough money uh, that allowed us to uh, go into our garage and start developing the technology, which took well over a year to uh, perfect the technology to the point we felt we had something that was fundable. So you were self-funded in effect? Self-funded for, for, for uh, almost 18 months. Well, yeah, almost 18 months. And during that time, again, you know, what were your friends and family saying? Were they supportive of this? Were they, were they, uh, uh, I would say 100% support. Okay. Uh, you know, across the board from friends and family. Um, a lot of people excited about the opportunity of a, a startup and very excited about the uh, the product uh, and the, and what we were trying to solve. Okay, and and who were the founding members uh, of the organization of of Cogent? And how did you pull them to together? Yeah, so uh, the other founder, our CTO, is Scott Terry, mm -hmm. and uh, Scott and I have actually worked together and known each other in the industry for about seven years. Right. Uh, I was uh, selling at one time uh, chipsets from Prairiecom, and Scott was a customer of mine, and that's how we we met. 
And eventually, uh, when I came in uh, to run the division at CSI Wireless, Scott was a lead engineer at CSI Wireless. Um, so we've known each other and have a, have a great history and a great worker relationship. Okay, so you've known each other, you've worked together in the past, yeah. and, and, and obviously you, you, you had complementary skill yeah, sets. Absolutely. So that's the big thing. And you decided to go into an area which was something that was an area that you already knew. Correct. A, a lot, lot about. How did you come across the opportunity to develop? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the history is, the history is um, you know, I at CSI Wireless, we were solving, um, putting in phone systems mm -hmm. uh, in, in emerging markets, uh, major markets like Mexico, India, and they don't have landlines, so uh, we designed uh, unique products that were basically desktop phones that had very high gain antennas that could transmit a, a further distance, so it, it became very economic for a carrier to deploy telephone services. So, it, been involved in uh, the overall, the just dealing with signals in pretty horrible conditions. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a, a problem I had is I, I also like to work in a home office, and I constantly was having problems with cell phone. Uh, making calls on my cell phone. I live with my cell phone, so I'd have to go outside. And I started looking on the internet for types of solutions to solve the problem. And uh, I was surprised how complex, uh, you know, the uh, requirements for installation and whatnot. And just had, a, had an idea that uh, there'd be a much easier way to uh, bring cellular signals uh, in, into a home office environment. And that was, that was the start of the whole idea. Okay, so you, you, I mean, phrase it a different way. What was the first big thing that you got going on? Uh, was it coming up with a business plan? Was it developing a prototype? What did you get moving on first? Of yeah, all? Our, uh, our first uh, step was to try to uh, create a system that um, was very inexpensive, so we were using a lot of handset uh, parts. Um, that was able to capture a signal, repeat, a, re repeat the signal, and do that in a basically a self-enclosed unit. So we have, mm -hmm. a, we have a real tiny box that uh, allows you to do that. And we went through uh, several versions of the product. Um, the real breakthrough was in July, I still remember this, because prior to that we would try different installations because uh, we were at one time repeating the entire band, so uh, a PCS band mm -hmm. or a cellular band, the entire band. And the problem with that is it as a, if there was a, com if you're a Sprint user and you had a T-Mobile base station that was near, all that energy was coming in the device and we we're having difficulties managing uh, mm -hmm. all that energy. And really what happened was uh, we weren't really enhancing the signal, say the, the Sprint signal, which is the tower that's further away because of all the near field. Uh, all the energy that was coming in. When we, uh, w our breakthrough was we came up with a very interesting method of going to a sub-channel. Uh, once we went to a sub-channel, what that did is mask out all the other towers and focus on the tower that you were using, and it became repeatable. We were able to, in all our uh, different test sites, now have 100% uh, the device working. Mm -hmm. So it was, that, was, that was the breakthrough. Prior to that, you know, I'm looking at a 50% return rate, so we don't have a business yet. Okay. So, <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, Mohammed, if I can come back, come back to you, please. <coughs> so, Mike here has explained that he pulled together a team from people that he already knew and had worked with, mm -hmm. and was working in an area, or is working in an area that he he knows quite a lot, lot about. And their first major uh, 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 task was to create prototypes uh, of a working unit. Is this? Typical of what you see with successful startups, or, or is this somewhat different? What do you what do you normally Many see? Many of the what? startups, in, especially in Silicon Valley, are more technology focused, and most of the companies are started by engineers. So that's what they look at. They look at prototype, something they can show that is functional, one way or the other, a partially functional or functional, or even through simulation that it works. So that's pretty typical. Very few people if they are very well known past entrepreneurs they just go to the vc and they get the funding and then they start the whole thing but here is this is very common as far as uh, entrepreneurs in general they, they they use their own money a little bit whatever they have they develop the prototype or a software program or whatever they are doing and they show it to the potential investors and customers 
and when they get customer traction, then investors also, also get interested in that right. because there is now they're solving real need okay. uh, uh, for a real problem. Okay, and, and talking about problems, Mike. I mean, this kind of been smooth sailing. What what was the first major headache that you had to overcome in, in the eighteen months you were self funded? Uh, well, there was there was a, a tremendous amount of challenges. Um, you know, uh, a lot of personal issues related to just financing and keeping mm -hmm. kind of keeping the boat uh, floating all along. Mm -hmm. I'd say that was. Uh, that's n the number one challenge is trying to manage the money. Right. Um, you know, outside of that, we also had to leverage a lot of existing relationships because we ended up building prototypes, um, and we we did this on uh, very little money. Uh, so we leveraged a lot of our uh, relationships that we had with suppliers, with a factory that uh, I've used extensively in the past, <coughs> and um, but there was a lot of negotiating, a lot of flying around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of goodwill uh, to pull pull together to pull together the prototypes. Okay, so when did you first start thinking about venture funding? We uh, once we uh, had a repeatable, uh, predictable unit that was working that we were comfortable with. Uh, that was in July of two thousand and seven. Uh, I joined S phase mm -hmm. um, at that at that time, <laughs> somewhere around that time. Uh, and uh, started attending on a very regular basis the classes just to get much more familiar with uh, the whole process. Because at that time we hadn't even formulated a company, we weren't sure about company structure. So it was just that whole, that whole uh, process we went through. And although I have experience in the area, I just wanted to you know, kind of re immerse uh, you know, in, in the whole uh, kind of starting over and uh, just looking at everything fresh. And S-Phase was great for that. It really, uh, a lot of connections. I attended some of the, uh, a lot of the social events. Mm -hmm. We found our attorneys through uh, S-Phase. Um, uh, but that was in July, uh, and we uh, put a plan together, a deck. It turns out you go through uh, decks, multiple decks, until mm -hmm. you get it right. Right. Uh, and uh, we eventually raised money in December of 2007. So it's about six months. Process. Okay, so a couple of interesting things there. One was you didn't, you hadn't even formed a company while you were working on the development That's of correct. the unit. So uh, the people who were working with you, it was all on faith. It was, it was on, on faith, yeah. And uh, we we leveraged uh, a lot of, you know, Silicon Valley. The one of the big benefits here is there's just a tremendous uh, resource pool. <coughs> Uh, we have a very extensive network here in the valley, so we were able to get you know layout people to help us do layouts, uh, RF engineers. We did pay some consulting uh, as we went along, but it was a lot of goodwill, um, you know, to get where we were. And it's just really leveraging the environment we're in. Okay, that's an outstanding testament to the track record and the, and the relationships mm -hmm. you, you you must have that you yeah. could do that in such a period of time. So, um, can you talk a little bit about? Your your funding strategy and what attracted you to Koretsu Forum? Yeah, our uh, so our uh, funding strategy. Uh, you know, we were looking for seed investment to mm -hmm. start with, uh, and and the, uh, the probably the major milestone that we wanted to achieve was to get prototypes uh, out in the field uh, using the the seed investment uh, for that. And we had two prototypes. We had uh, or two markets that we're targeting. Initially, one is uh, here in North America. We had a PCS mm -hmm. version because that's where we live. Uh, we built a, a PCS model, uh, but uh, probably the the real uh, target market was Europe, the UMTS networks uh, with access to data. Mm -hmm. uh, so we built uh, basically the, those two two models. Uh, we uh, used the money uh, that we raised to build prototypes uh, to. Uh, Initiate marketing and sales efforts in primarily in Europe. Uh, met with a lot of the the carriers. Uh, actually, got into uh, some of the labs, um, and uh, you know, and we're still in process with some of the testing that we're doing uh, with some major networks. Okay, as I asked you before, so w w what attracted <coughs> you to Koretsu Kur Forum as as your yeah so uh, yeah so through uh, through S uh one of the events uh, that they uh, 
they have as a first impression. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity. Uh, I was selected for uh, first imp impression. Uh, this is an opportunity where you basically trial your uh, your deck, and this was early on, probably in uh, August, September time frame, where we were just going through our initial deck. Uh, so we presented to a friendly group of VCs, although they did beat me up uh, pretty well in the meeting. <laughs> but uh, in in addition to the uh, the kind of the panel that was giving feedback mm -hmm. on the deck. Uh, there were members of the Kritsu Forum that mm. were uh, in the audience. The audience was about 35 people uh, in, in that presentation. And after the first impression, there's, uh, there's time for you know, coffee and, and, and whatnot. And uh, I met with some of the Kritsu uh, folks, and they invited me to come in and uh, give a presentation to their screening. Uh, so that was really the catalyst. So it's through SBAs that okay. uh, actually got us introduced into into Kritsu. Okay. So, M M Mohammed, w when was the first time that you met Mike and, and, the, and the Koja team? And what was it that attracted you to them? So, uh, I met Mike when he presented, I think, in October yes. mm -hmm. of uh, 2007. And I was in the audience when he presented there. Uh, there's generally a screening uh, com thing. I didn't go there this time around. So, I met him with a big group. And there were a lot of people who were interested in looking at that because at Kiritsu Forum, after every presentation, they have a sign-up sheet, people who are interested in knowing more, not necessarily investing. Mm -hmm. Some of them would invest also. And the thing which, which really uh, attracted me was the first, the, the problem set which they were solving and the, the, the form factor which was in there. So it was just a product. I didn't know Mike as much. Uh, and uh, and seems like that that was the real problem. I faced with that at different places, not in my house or my home office, but other places. And so uh, we started looking at some of the competition and then found out that this was maybe one of the best here. So then we started talking to Mike Moore. There was a Karutsu Forum generally, if pe there are enough people interested, they form a due diligence team mm -hmm. of five to seven people, depending on how many people are interested in doing that. So I have about five people in there, and they generally select a lead who kind of coordinates all the activities. Uh, so in the lead's uh, job is either pick one portion and do due diligence. Generally, right. I do financing and legal side of it. Other, uh, there were two people who did marketing side of it. One person did uh, uh, on the technology side also although I understand technology a little bit on this side. So that's the process we went through. And, and during that time, we met Mike many times. Uh, at, uh, In fact, a couple of times at uh, one of the Karatsu member members' house also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in San Ramon area. And we generally look at people first, who are the people who are doing it. And Mike, uh, whatever he, he presented and whatever he claimed, uh, we were easily, we could easily validate what his claims were. So whether it was the market, or whether it's the problem set, whether it was the technology, uh, we were able to validate. And that's uh, kind of a comfort side of it. And I tell all the entrepreneurs, I advise many entrepreneurs, and I say, whatever you claim, whatever you say, think of it as it will be validated uh, mm -hmm. with a third party somewhere, because nobody will just believe you, because there are most of the people are quite honest, but not always. And your thinking may be totally different than what the real world is out there. So they're going to validate. So that's what we did. And we talked to customers. We uh, went around and uh, talked to some of the not competitor. We actually tested. I personally tested competitor's product. Mm -hmm. First in my house, it was good. But my signal is very good to start with. So we went to uh, Cogent's office, and there was very bad signal. Mm -hmm. And it worked little bit, but it totally failed on the data side of it at that time. Mm -hmm. And one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of uh, test in their, their product versus the other product, which was pretty expensive in a way and more, more installation required than this product, which is just a desktop, two-minute setup, and you're done. Mm -hmm. Over there, you had to string a wire, and there was a set, which was the receiver set, and then a tr another transmitter sitting there. So. So there was more of an issue in there. And that, so that kind of convinced from the technology side that they have something which is more 
uh, than other people had. The other thing people look at, although maybe sometimes not important, are the patents, and they had very good idea. And I, I was at uh, Intel Legal Department doing patents over there for three years, so I understood about the patents in there and the which what he talked about selected sub channel. That is the innovative idea behind the whole thing, and that patent was is the fundamental patent, and they've been able to uh, file that patent. So. so, if I can summarize this, they they they, they had identified an, an, a, a known problem that you personally had experienced. Mm. There's a team of people mm. that you felt confident with. Mm. You were able to do real life comparisons with the competition to demonstrate to yourself that theirs was a superior mm -hmm. product. And they had intellectual property that could provide a barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. So this, this sounds like, you know, of, of, of all the cards you could have to have on your side. You've got a pretty good set there, Mike. I mean, you've got some good stuff. Is this the type of thing that you look for in the investments that you make, or are there other, char other general characteristics that you look for? So I do investment in seed level and other uh, people who have already have revenue in there. So this one, uh, we don't do due diligence on the customer order side of it. But right. if there is, a, uh, there is a company which has even started some revenue, then you start talking to them about the, uh, talking to customer, their customers, mm -hmm. about what their plans are and what volume they see compared to what the what the company is uh, projecting, and they're trying to validate again the assumptions behind that. So I'm in another company which was a Series B, and it was they had everything production done. They were selling already to big companies, and so I talked to the customers who were buying that product. So that was not necessary in this case. Right. It was more of a talking to customer just for the sense of how big the market could be here, what the problem is, whether they would use it, because some of them are carriers here, so right. whether they would utilize that. So kind of different. But uh, generally, those that's the f four or five things uh, every investor look at, which you just mentioned. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, patent side of it, uh, sometimes it's overrated because uh, small companies can have patents, but it's very difficult to defend against uh, some giant out there right. uh, who may have not have patents, but they can bury you in lawsuits, and every lawsuit costs you $3 million. So. Right. Okay. That's, that's pretty good. So so now you've got some funding from Currency Forum. It's taken you to do, I think as you explained, you've done some some uh, uh, some work in both Europe and, in, and in, in, in the U.S. to establish markets and make contacts. Um, what what is your next step? Do you now need to go and raise more funding? Are you going on to the sales side? Are you going on the money? Wh where is Cogent now, and what yeah. what are your next moves? Yeah, so uh, you know what what we've done uh, up to this point. Uh, w one area we've spent a lot of focus on is uh, on filing patents. So we have uh, 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 eight patents. We have twenty one inventions in the first uh, product. For the patents, we uh, filed as international patents, and then uh, the, the remaining, we just U.S. trade. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we stabilized, you know, the IP. So all the due diligence and the prior art uh, has been uh, been finished, and that's an expensive process, but mm. uh, you know, it's a lot of value uh, to to the company. We also, uh, because we manufacture offshore. Uh, developed the methodology of encrypting uh, the algorithms so that they, they couldn't be reversed engineered. So we have now uh, that methodology uh, stabilized. Uh, you know, we have all of the units out in the field and we have uh, feedback from the field. And, you know, it's uh, varying feedback. We've had to make uh, already some adjustments and changes to, uh, to the product. Uh, but we're at now at a point where we're ready to uh, close a Series A. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, at least a two million dollar uh, round. <coughs> uh, with that, it's really becoming more of a sales and marketing uh, play, where we're going to be deploying uh, marketing expertise, viral marketing, and uh, direct salespeople to start managing some of the channels. Okay, and and what's your strategy for looking to um, acquire that? That additional venture funding, will you leverage the relationships you have with Currency Forum? Is this a completely new deal? Uh, how are you going to go about doing yeah, that? Yeah, so we have uh, we have a list of uh, about 100 uh, VC firms here in Silicon Valley that uh, do invest in the wireless space. 
Uh, in addition to that, uh, we, we have already uh, 12 investors in, in Cogent. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those investors are highly networked. Some of them are uh, partners in uh, venture funds. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're leveraging, uh, you know, all the resources uh, for the proper introductions into uh, the investment community. Okay, so you're, you're anticipating that your current investors will help you as part of your strategy to, to get that they next round. They are helping round. us. They okay, are helping terrific. Us. Yeah. So we're starting to to run out of time now. I've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Mohammed, do you have any, any last words of wisdom for entrepreneurs watching this show as to how they can best p p position themselves to get angel funding or to get in front of the Caretsu Forum team? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things which, even if you don't have technology yet all honed in, you better have a very good team. Good team doesn't mean experienced team. Mm -hmm. Good team means the area expertise, segment expertise in there, and should be able to understand market side of it. Because at that time, you're just going with kind of almost blind that whether technology will work or not. We invested in, in a company which was just, they had an idea and a simulation, a software simulation. Mm -hmm. But the people, two people who started that had a very good credentials from the other side. So that's the best thing, uh, that's the first thing you have to have, a very good team. Because if there is one person, it's very difficult. Two people gets kind of, it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but then two of them have to be kind of compatible and complementary to each other. Okay. Mike, in 30 seconds, what, what words of wisdom do you have for, for entrepreneurs starting out on this process? Uh, you know, my, uh, probably my number one word of wisdom is, uh, you know, immediately think about how you're going to raise money. Um, Join SBAs, uh, and uh, you know, just be very open-minded about you know how you're going to go through this minefield because it's uh, it's challenging uh, and a tremendous amount of effort and keeps you up at night. So okay, that's that's the uh, major focus. So we're out of time, unfortunately, but uh, I'd like to thank you know Michael and Mahoney. Thank you very much for thank coming you. along tonight, for sharing your experiences, and uh, thanks and good night from SBAs and the Silicon Valley Entrepreneur, and we look to forward to seeing you uh, on our next show next month. Thank you.